All right, let's use the uh, equals NPER um, in Excel. So that's this formula, NPER. Um, so what this does is find uh, lengths of time and time value of money problems. Uh, so I'm going to kind of tab back and forth. I've got some practice problems here uh, that I'm having, having you do uh, if you're in this semester or if you're in future semesters, one we've done in the past with practice problems. Um, but if you have something like this, you say, hey, I'm going to invest $10,000 right now. How long will it take for that $10,000 to be worth $20,000 if it's returning 5.08% per year? Um, and so again, you know, now, so present value 20,000, uh, how long will it take to get there? That's the future value, what we want to get to, and then uh, our rate of return. And so if you have something like that, you can set it up this way. So our present value is uh, $10,000. I'm gonna put the $10,000 in in negative again. So I'm investing that $10,000. So that $10,000 is going out right now. I don't get to use it. Um, temporarily and so it's a negative the future value that money will come back to me because one uh, present value and future value one's got to be negative one's got to be positive pretty much uh, always um, in a time value of money sense so uh, for the math work and then um, uh, the rate so the rate was uh, 5.08 percent um, <clears throat> so uh, that's the information I have and then uh, NPER is what I'm going to do um, and I'm just going to make that capital in the number of years. Um, but NPER is the, the name of it. So here's my rate. Uh, oh, we don't have a payment. So zero. So again, comment says payment. I don't have a payment in this one. Uh, present value is I'm putting $10,000 into an investment. And then future value is uh, $20,000. And it's going to tell me that it takes about 14 years um, for that to happen. Uh, so that's how the formula works. Now, what's really going on there then is if we want to track the value of our investment, it starts at $10,000. So I'm going to go negative the present value real quick. Um, so it starts there, and that's in times zero because it's present value. And then as we go out, oh, as we go out, one and two here, uh, we can drag that over to 14. Um, then each year we're going to compound so i'm going to grow the previous balance by one plus growth uh, which is our interest rate and then i'm going to add which in this case I'm gonna, oh I'm not, I mean, I'm not adding anything to it i'm just growing it out so i'm just going to multiply by one plus growth uh, and then carry that out for the 14 years um, and that's it so then in year 14 we should be right at $20,000. So at the end of 14 years, we're $20,000. We have a little bit of overhang here, $20,011.55. Um, um, so anyway, uh, that is how you do the basic infer. We can also do it for um, payments instead of uh, this. So this one, we invested money and just let it grow. Uh, if instead we're doing a payment structure, uh, so that's like this one. If you invest $1,000 per year, so now we're investing uh, $1,000 each year. Um, I'm going to see how long it takes for that to grow to $20,000 at the same rate. Okay, so uh, now we have no present value. Present value is now zero. Uh, instead, we have a payment. That payment is going to be $1,000. Again, this is money going out, so I have to invest it. So I'm giving that money away each year. Uh, $1,000. Again, the future value is going to be the same. Uh, rate's going to be the same. And we are going to calculate. So equals NPER. Uh, so there's my rate. There's my payment. There's my present. Uh, oh, present value zero. Uh, there's my future value. I hit enter. Um, and it's going to take just a tiny bit longer. Um, 14.15 years. Um, so again, what's going on now is in year zero, we're not doing anything. We're not actually doing anything until year one. Um, and I'm going to go out to year 15. Uh, and we'll cross over there. But now in year one, I'm going to put in $1,000. Then that $1,000 is going to start to grow in the same way that 10,000 did. So I'm going to multiply it by uh, one plus growth. 
And then that will carry forward as the balance grows. It'll keep doing that. And then each year I'm going to add, and I'm going to subtract. So I put this in as negative to make the present value formula work. But each year I'm going to add another $1,000, just like that. So I'm locking the two I'm pulling from the, the rate and the, the payment, which are going to stay the same each year. And then I'm going to carry that same value over. Okay. Um, and you'll see in year 15, we actually end up at 21,708. Um, so at the end of 14 years, I have $19,700 instead of 20,011. Now, again, what I, I actually had to put in more money here. So I had to put in $1,000 14 times. Um, whereas here I only put in 10,000 here. I actually put in 14,000, but since I put that 10,000 in it at the front, it's compounding in the early years. And so you're compounding with a bigger number in the front years. And so it gets the $20,000 quicker, even though I put in more dollars total over this lifespan. Um, and so it kind of shows you that power of compounding a little bit. Okay. Uh, and then if you want to see kind of how the decimals here work, this isn't perfect, but it'll, it'll show you pretty close. Um, you can see 0.14915 um, is kind of the overhang. So it takes a little bit more. And so if you take the, the difference um, between year 15 and year 14, uh, you can multiply that by um, the, the decimal overhang, 0.14915. And that's about how much of the year it takes to close that gap. Um, so if I take that amount of the total gain for the year and add it to here, um, whoa, what did I do? I did something wrong. So if I add this to what I had at the end of year 14, it's going to be about what I was going to end up at. That's not exactly true because there's still the payment built in and, and, and the compounding principle and depending on how fast you're compounding and stuff. But, um, anyway, we could zero it out if we were really, really gung-ho about it. But I'm not going to mess with it right now. Okay, so that's the sort of payment thing. So we can do it with a, a fixed present value. We can do it with payment structures. We can also do it with both. So we can do the same thing um, again, only this time I'm going to do uh, a present. So I'm going to put the 10,000 in, right? So I'm putting, actually, let's just copy this all down. So I'm doing this again, uh, these three things again, right? Um, but I'm also going to have a payment, so I'm going to invest 10000 and invest 1000 each year. So I also have a payment uh, of $1,000. Um, then my in, in is going to be like this. So rate, payment, present value, future value. Uh, and now we're going to get there way quicker because we're investing a lot, a lot of money up front and then continually investing. Um, and so if we come down here and we're like, hey, here's the value going forward and times zero, it equals 10,000 because we're putting in that in present value terms. And then uh, as we go out, we only have to go out six years now. Um, like that. Uh, so then the next year, I'm going to get growth on the 10,000. And I'm going to be adding $1,000 to it like that. And I'm going to get to 20000 before year six. Right? So just a little bit before year six, I'll take $20,000. So you get there really quick, but you're putting in a lot more money. Right? So we're putting in 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16,000 dollars now. So we're putting in a lot more money. We're also front loading a big chunk of it. And so we're going to get there really fast relative to the first two. Okay, so we can do payment, we can do uh, lump sum up front and grow, or we can do both um, with this, this function. Um, and then I've got a little bit more complicated problem for you to mess with here. Um, uh, so you kind of learn how to, how to mess with the, the pieces. So a little bit more of a realistic problem to deal with. But anyway, that's how you do uh, the MPER function in Excel.